Bruce Feldman, Fox Sports reporter, college football writer for The Athletic. Bruce will be at the Rose Bowl Saturday night. It's LSU at UCLA. That game will be on Fox. Hey, Bruce, uh, glad to have you on. How surprised are you that uh, UCLA is favored in this game against LSU? Uh, to me, the thing, Dan, that a lot of people have kind of had their eyes open to, I think, is this might be the year, it feels like the year that Chip Kelly has finally turned the corner with the Bruins. You have a lot of guys who played three and four years. He has a big time running game, uh, two really physical running backs. Zach Charbonnet transferred from, from Michigan. He's a Southern California kid, looked terrific, albeit against a really bad Hawaii team. And then you take the fact that LSU is coming off of a rough five and five year. And also LSU has two new new coordinators, both guys, offensive uh, play caller and defensive play caller. They're brand new, have really no experience calling plays in a game. So I think on the that side of it, it's going to be interesting to see how LSU tries to deal with all the stuff that Chip Kelly and his offense is going to throw at him formationally, as well as they have three really good tight ends. I think they're going to do a lot of stuff with them. And, and the challenge is how does LSU adjust to it? Chip came out with Oregon, and, and it, it was new, and then he went to the NFL, and it was new, and then went to UCLA and hasn't had the success, maybe hasn't gotten the athletes there. But is he still an offensive innovator the way he was when we were you know, touting him at Oregon and certainly that first year in the NFL? I think he is. I think you're going to see some really unique stuff with what they do in the run game. Uh, now I think they have the big people up front. When he took over – um, it was a complete overhaul from what Jim Mora had. And obviously there was been a lot of growing pains there. I think the biggest difference with this UCLA program compared to what he had at Oregon, remember he jumped in with Mike Bellotti at first. He was the, he was the offensive coordinator. Then he took over the program, but they had, they had recruited a lot of speed there. Um, I, they have a couple of guys who can really run Kaz Allen can fly, but uh, he's a receiver, but in terms of you don't see like a Michael James, DeAnthony Thomas kind of factor in this offense. Um, I think that's different for them. They are going to to really try to get you off balance and get your head spinning and then bludgeon you uh, with physicality, which is different really than what we saw with Oregon, which was everything was so fast. I mean, he's got his line about how you know, back when he was at Oregon, they had they went really fast and they had fancy uniforms and, and shiny helmets. And now pretty much everybody else has those options, too. I think the thing that you're going to see with him and he's actually been an innovator, I think, in a lot of ways in preparation. I mean, he's one of the reasons why people all throughout football, not just in college football, changed their their basically weekly practice schedule to get athletes ready for game day. I think so. There's a lot of stuff that he probably deserves credit for that you know, maybe gets lost as people just think about, oh, he, he made everybody go fast and he talks fast and all that stuff. I think there's a lot of wrinkles you're going to see now that he has a lot of pieces he can work with and a lot of guys who they have a lot of buy-in and a lot of experience in what he's looking for. The quarterback who has the most pressure this year is who? Uh, ooh, that's a good question. I mean, I think you know, you, you joked and you talked about about Bryce Young a minute ago. I think there's a lot of pressure on him because the expectation is so high. Um, you know, for me, it, when you're talking about Alabama, what's different this year is Sark was great with uh, quarterbacks. Like I did a story a couple uh, a week ago for the Athletic about the evolution of the Alabama offense, and there's been so many different hands in it, and so many different coaches have come and gone. Uh, there and made their little adaptations. I think Bill O'Brien and people remember him obviously from when he was the head coach at Penn State and certainly what he did in the NFL. But Sark is a big shoes to replace because Sark was as good coaching the quarterbacks as anybody who's come through in Tuscaloosa. And I think what's unique there is you're you're. It's not just we got to replace Sark. We got to replace Mac Jones. You have to replace five first round picks on that offense. And so John Mechie's a really good receiver, but the receiving room at Ohio State had been, I'm sorry, the receiving room at Alabama had been off the charts in the last couple of years, really in the last decade. I still think there's talent, but people are going to expect Bryce Young to go in there and just tear it up. And he might, I mean, he's a, he's a really highly regarded kid out of Southern California, 
but the bar is incredibly high there at Alabama just because no matter who's been there, it's kept getting better. And it's going to be hard to be better than what they were last year, even as good, I think. You're going to the LSU-UCLA game, but if you could go to one other game this weekend, which one would it be? Uh, man, there's great choices. Um, I love the matchup in, in Penn State, Penn State going to Wisconsin. Uh, I think Indiana and IU is Iowa is a really fun game to me though. You got to go with the top five matchup and it's like, what happens in Charlotte with, with Clemson and Georgia, you got so many five-star guys on the field. Um, I think expectations for national title is big, especially with, with Georgia. They haven't done it. It's been a long, long time since they won a national title. They have all these five-star guys. I think there's a lot of hype around JT Daniels and you know, I want to see it. I mean, because it's not like their schedule on either side is is loaded. This is the heavyweight matchup out of the gate. This is also the only ranked team right now that Clemson is is set up to play in the regular season. So, you know, don't stub your toe here or anything like that. But I I, I think what you have are two teams that are really, really loaded with big athletic dudes in the front seven, especially on the D lines. And I think I would expect a really low scoring physical game with them and to me, it's like, how well can Georgia run the football? Because they're down three, you know, five-star athletes, you know, at tight end and receiver and for this matchup. And that's going to be hard to put on JT Daniels, I think. Bruce Feldman, Fox Sports reporter. He'll be uh, covering LSU and UCLA. That'll be 8.30 Eastern, Saturday night at the Rose Bowl. How would you sum up the offseason for college football? chaotic um damn to me it was such a bombshell when it came out and it came out basically the week of of uh big 10 media days here that all of a sudden whoa texas and ou are gonna bolt from the big 12 to go to the sec to me what's so crazy about that and the subplot in this is there's been all that talk about co uh, college football playoff expansion. And there was a working group with, with basically four people, the AD of Notre Dame, the Mountain West commissioner, as well as Bob Bowlesby from the Big 12 and Greg, and, uh, Greg Sankey from the SEC. The fact that this was go they were having these meetings and all this discussion, and while it was going on, Greg Sankey was basically gutting the Big 12 and Bob Bowlesby's league um, is kind of really mind blowing business stuff in, in terms of that and how it really uh, rocked the big 12. And again, I talked to some ADs in the league that week who were like, this is the most stable we felt like we've been in a decade. And all of a sudden now wow. you're two brands that really are the ones that the TV networks care about. The other ones they don't rate. It's the two that are Greg Sankey and the SEC are, are taking away. I mean, that created a lot of dominoes that are still affecting, you know, right now we think the, the big 12 leftovers may are going to probably reach out to BYU and Houston and Cincinnati um, and UCF. And so that has a domino effect to me. That's a big part of it. The NIL is certainly a story with now we've gotten used to players posing for pictures with cars that they just got and it's all legal now. <laughs> I mean, that's another like, whoa, moment that where are we at in 2021? We've come a long way. Good to check in with you, Bruce. Should be fun this year. Certainly a whole lot different than a year ago at this time where we didn't know what was happening with the Big Ten or the Pac-12. And now we have doubts about the future of the uh, the Big 12, or at least the artist formerly known as. But um, uh, should be fun. Thanks for joining us, Bruce. We appreciate it. Always a pleasure, Dan. Thanks for having me. Uh, Bruce Feldman, Fox Sports reporter, college football writer for The Athletic.